Everything in the world is made out of atoms, and the atom is the smallest whole structure that makes up matter. Within the atom, you have the subatomic particles, and these include the proton, the neutron, and the electron. The charge for the proton is plus one. The neutron is neutral, giving it a charge of zero, and the electron has a charge of negative one. The mass of a proton is one atomic mass unit. The mass of a neutron is also one atomic mass unit. Now the mass of an electron is about an 18 hundredth of an atomic mass unit. So for all intents and purposes, the mass is zero. Throughout my tutorials, I will be representing the proton with just a positive charge with perhaps a brackets or parentheses around it. The neutron can just be a capital N, and the electron I will typically write as E minus or just a negative charge in parentheses. Two important aspects or characteristics of every atom are the atom's atomic number, and this is represented by the letter Z, and the atom's atomic mass, which is represented by the letter A. The atomic number represents the number of protons within an atom, and this is the very identity of the atom. If I look at the periodic table, which we'll do in the next video, and I look for the atom with one proton, I know that one proton is the atom hydrogen. If I were to add one proton to hydrogen, it's no longer hydrogen, but it's actually the element helium identified by two protons. The atomic mass, on the other hand, is not that specific to the, to the individual atom. The atomic mass is just the total mass or the total weight of the atom, and this comes from the weight of the protons plus the weight of the neutrons. We know the proton number doesn't change, but the neutrons can be different within similar atoms or within atoms of the same type. For example, let's look at the atom carbon. There is carbon-12 and there is carbon-14. The number written on the top left of the atom implies the mass, so I know that I have carbon with a mass of 12 and carbon with a mass of 14. Now where does this mass come from? I know that each of the carbons have six protons, and if I subtract six from the mass, I get six remaining for carbon-12 and eight remaining for carbon-14, and this has to represent the number of neutrons. Now, how is it possible to have an atom that has a different number of neutrons? This is where we introduce the concept of the isotope. An isotope simply means that you have the same atom with the same atomic number, but they simply have a different number of neutrons and therefore a different weight. Now, the proton weighs one and the neutron weighs one. Yet, if you look on the periodic table, you're going to see decimals or in-between values for certain atoms. For example, chlorine on the periodic table has a mass of 35.45. How do I get a decimal in the mass? This comes from taking the average of all naturally occurring chlorine isotopes and getting an in-between number. Luckily, we've left all that math behind in general chemistry and we only care about concepts for organic chemistry. Of particular importance to organic chemistry is the deuterium or heavy hydrogen isotope. The element hydrogen has an atomic number of one, so each atom will have one proton. The neutrons will range from zero, one, two, and on. For the atom that has one proton and no neutrons, we get a mass of one, and this is the standard hydrogen atom that you are used to. This atom is also called protium, and it occurs in 99% of the hydrogen atoms. When you have hydrogen with one proton and one neutron, you get a mass of two, and this is the deuterium. Often written with just a letter D, deuterium is a heavy hydrogen and plays a role in specific reactions of organic chemistry when you're trying to track the hydrogen atom. It'll also show up later in NMR. If you see a molecule written that should have a hydrogen but has D in its place, that simply means the same molecule with a heavy hydrogen. For example, H2O 
written as D2O is simply heavy water. And lastly, we have one proton and two neutrons for a mass of three, giving us tritium. Now, tritium and any heavier hydrogens are going to be radioactive, but they're not going to come up in organic chemistry, so let's not worry about it. The next thing I want to talk about is the atomic structure and to see where all the subatomic particles are located. In the center of the atom, we have the nucleus, and the nucleus contains your protons and your neutrons. Since protons and neutrons are the heavy subatomic particles, this is where all the mass of the atom comes from. And since the protons are positively charged, the charge of the nucleus, or the nuclear charge, is going to be positive. To find the nuclear charge of an atom, you can count up all the protons, and then your charge will be positive that number. For example, the atom here will have a nuclear charge of positive 3. You can also find the nuclear charge by looking for the atomic number of the atom, since the atomic number represents the number of protons. Around the nucleus, you have your shells, or orbitals, and this is where you'll find the electrons. Each electron is confined to its own principal energy level, a topic to be discussed in a future video. The most important of the shells, and that's where you'll find the most important electrons, is your valence, or outermost shell. The valence electrons, or outermost electrons, are the ones we care about most for organic chemistry, and this is because these are the very electrons that are going to interact and pretty much do all the reactions that we're going to see in organic chemistry. To understand just how the subatomic particles are actually located in the atom, picture a giant football stadium and in the very center of the stadium, you have a tiny but heavy marble. The marble represents the nucleus, and the mass of the marble represents the protons and the neutrons. And then picture all the way out in the stand, you have tiny little flies just zipping around, and these represent the electrons. And this is to try to give you an idea of the sheer size of the atom and the smallness of the subatomic particles compared to the overall structure. Now join me in the next video where we actually look at the different atoms and understand the periodic table. I hope you enjoyed this video. Test your knowledge of this topic by taking the free quiz link below. And don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Have questions? Post them in the comments below or use the contact form on layofersci.com forward slash contact. I also offer online private tutoring via Skype. For a full list of subjects covered and additional study information, visit me at www.leaforsci.com.